Hi, welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect Operations Center version 8.1.11. We are going to be showing you how to utilize the Operations Center to do DRM tape volume management. Back in version 8.1.10, we introduced the ability to do retention set DRM tape management from the OC. And in this version, we're extending the DRM capability in the Operations Center to include database backup volumes as well as tape copies. This will allow you to update the status of the volume as it goes through the different on-site, off-site status from mountable to not mountable to courier to vault to vault retrieve back to courier retrieve, on-site retrieve, and then once again mountable. Now the update of the status of these volumes can be done either through the operation center or through the traditional scripts. With that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Evan to do the demo. This is the demonstration for moving disaster recovery media in the OC. Now, a couple things to note about moving DRM in the OC is that it's only eligible on 8.1.11 servers and only copy and container copy pools defined in queue DRM status will be eligible for these moves. So to get there, we start at the overview tab. We go to the storage navigation tab, and then we click on storage pools. Now here, there's a bunch of different storage pools. We can select a storage pool in our environment. Now, these need to be on tape. Disaster recovery media is intended for tape. So we have this pool here, for example, copy tape. We can go to the volumes tab of that storage pool. And here you can see it's grayed out and we need to select a table row to do that. Now we've selected a table row and it's gonna tell us that we can't move volumes from the storage pool because we haven't set it as a DRM storage pool. This can be updated from the command line. But to do that, we'll have to open a command builder. And here I've already queried the DRM status. And we can see that the copy storage pool that we have defined on this server is copy pool. And the one that we want to move, use is copy tape. So to change your DRM storage pool for a copy storage pool, we can use the set DRM copy storage pool. And then we could give it a new name, copy tape, which is our new pool that we want to move DRM from. We'll go ahead and do that just for an example. You can see the command completed successfully. Here we go, it finally updated. Um, so now we have this option here to move media. Clicking that button will launch the move media dialog. There are a couple different features on this dialog that I'd like to talk about. The first is the destination media state. Now the media state that we selected from shows that it's, it basically transfers all this data in and we see a media state of mountable. And we do the same in key information here. We can select a valid two state based on this media state. So if it's mountable, the valid two states are vault, not mountable, courier and restore only. And we can see that there's a disc short description of each of these statuses. So let's say that we wanted to move it to a vault. There's also this new option to include database backups with our DR media, which is a best practice. Now, the reason we can't select this option here is because we don't have a database backup that's been performed to a tape device class. So on this server, we've been performing our database backups to a file device class. In an environment with a database backup, we would normally see the date of the database backup here. And we could interact with this checkbox, choosing it on, you know, turning it on and off. So that being said, let's move it to career. This is an optional state, but just to show a move in this environment, we can see that it succeeded. And if we wanna know more details, it'll tell us which volume moved here. Closing that dialog, we can see that the media state has moved to a courier state. Now that we're in a courier state, we can go back to the move media dialog, and we can see that the only valid move state now is from the courier to the vault state. And we could continue through the life cycle in a similar fashion with this uh, environment. So that's all I wanted to show in this server. Now, I wanted to also show how DRM would work if we did have a database backup on a tape device class. We'll jump over to this server. Again, we're gonna start at the overview page. We're gonna go to storage. 
and down to storage pools. Now we can go to a copy pool that we have on tape. We have this tape device class IBM 03. We can double click. And from the summary tab, we can go down to the volumes tab for this storage pool. And here we have three volumes in a mountable state. It'll tell you here we need to select at least one table row. You can select one to many rows. We'll go ahead and select two. And we can click the move media. And here we can see by default, the database backup checkbox is selected. And we have this additional row. So we selected two rows from the L3, but we also have this additional row with this icon here. If you hover over it, it's telling us that this is a database backup volume. So we can choose to include or exclude this database backup volume as part of our move. Now, again, it's best practice to move these volumes, uh, database backup volume offsite uh, with our regular DRM volumes. Uh, we can see that we have a date here when the last database backup occurs. There's a help tip that tells us, kind of, kind of walk us through this feature. It also links to a learn more topic here. So here is just the help topic that pops up. It talks to us a little bit about media states and valid two states, valid destination media states, it says in the help doc. And including database backups, that's what we've been talking about here. All the information is pretty well contained in that learn more link. So we've got three uh, volumes that we'd like to move. Now, we notice that this volume is in a not mountable state, and these two are in a mountable state. So when you have two volumes that are in different states, the destination media states that are shown are going to only be the ones that are valid for both states. So from not mountable states to mountable states can all go to a vault state, for example. So let's try that. There's that warning icon up at the top right of the page here that talks about the IO port for your um, tape library. We can click Move Media to perform the action. Again, we can click Show Details. And here, we can see that the check at, checking out action is occurring on those volumes. Now, this is a physical library, so it does take a minute for each volume to check out. First one just dropped to Vault State, and now it's working on checking out the second one. So you can see that both of the volumes have been moved to Vault. Now, moving media, we're moving the database backup volumes at least. That is only eligible for moving things off site, and that's by design. Now, the idea is that if you move a disaster recovery media volume off site, if you're bringing it back on site, your server is already down. So it's a one way street for the database backup volumes. However, we can just bring these volumes back on site if we needed to. So let's say we wanted to bring them back on site. We can't include the database backup volumes with this move because it's telling us. It's only available when you're moving volumes offsite. By default, we don't have that extra database backup volume row. But we can select our media and let's say we want to move it to an on site retrieve state. That means that the courier has brought back the volume and it's ready for us to use. Again, we select the option. With any of these steps, we can choose to add a location and then we can move media again. And we can see here that the media state's been changed to on-site retrieve. For moving disaster recovery media, again, it's very similar to the move retention media. The only difference is that it's extended to copy and container copy pools. On the command line, we do support moving disaster recovery media with active data tape pools, but we don't support that in the OC. So in summary, Spectrum Protect Operation Center now supports the ability to manage the volumes for database backups and tape copies as they go through the on-site, off-site DRM process. Thank you very much.